what is vitamin B12 and its role regarding cancer? Hello, it's August 1, 2018, and I am Dr. Colleen Huber, here again today in this ongoing series on cancer and biochemistry. In each one of these short videos, I give a very brief overview of the role of a particular nutrient with regard to cancer. Today I want to talk about vitamin B12, briefly mentioning its various forms, hydroxycobalamin, cyanocobalamin, and methylcobalamin. In most of this series, we have been looking at the electron transport chain here. You may remember that this chain of energy production is the necessary phase of our metabolism to detour away from the cancer pathway. Normal healthy metabolism goes through this pathway, but cancer generally takes a different path, over here to your right. The electron transport chain is so abundant in our bodies that it is estimated that a healthy cell has about 10,000 of these little engines in each mitochondria, perhaps a thousand mitochondria per cell, and our bodies have a few dozen trillion cells. Phew! This means approximately 10 to the 20th power, give or take a boatload, of these powerful electron transport chains are chugging away in our bodies, producing our locomotive energy, what we use to move, to think, and to continue living. Let's now look at what happens, for example, in a case of cyanide poisoning. This may seem irrelevant to our discussion of cancer, but I promise that I will wind it all back around to our topic at hand. Cyanide, you know, is a very strong poison. It does this by interfering with cytochrome oxidase, by binding to iron. This happens in complex four, near the end of the electron transport chain. This shuts down the electron transport chain, which is an absolutely massive problem. Death can occur within seconds to minutes. See, like I told you, we really need these 10 to the 20th power electron transport chain engines, let's call them, just to continue to live. That's why cyanide is such a powerful poison. So what is the treatment of choice? Hydroxycobalamin, a form of vitamin B12, even after onset of severe symptoms such as loss of consciousness, air hunger, and seizures, hydroxycobalamin has completely reversed some cases of cyanide poisoning when given promptly. Well, how does this happen, and what does all this have to do with cancer? I will be happy to answer that question. It so happens that cyanide preferentially binds to hydroxycobalamin rather than gumming up the electron transport chain. Whereas cyanide could totally mess up the electron transport chain, it actually prefers to go to, it is attracted to, hydroxycobalamin, and that makes the product cyanocobalamin, which is not at all toxic. I mean, it's not great. So as this intravenous hydroxycobalamin, vitamin B12, is given and spreads through the bloodstream, it is literally mopping up the cyanide, and then the electron transport chain is then unlocked or freed up to begin functioning normally again. Yay! The patient is saved. I mean, really. You give this B12 to the cyanide victim early enough, and all symptoms can be reversed. Do not mess with cyanide at home to see if it works. But before the patient is saved, let's look at part of the illness. The blood of cyanide patients shows severe lactic acidosis. Now, if you saw my previous videos on cancer and biochemistry, and if you haven't, please see them at this site. Anyway, if you saw my previous videos on the electron transport chain and the mitochondria, you know that when the electron transport chain gets shut down for any reason, then you know that normal healthy metabolism is blocked, like a dam on a river, cannot go this way, and must be diverted over here to the drainage ditch that is, the cancer pathway, here where pyruvate makes lactic acid. And this is why the cyanide poisoning victims get so sick so fast with severe lactic acidosis, because they are forced very quickly to send all their breakdown of food, all the breakdown of food here, over here, to produce lactic acid, since the electron transport chain is down for the count. So you might wonder, if a cyanide victim can die within minutes or even seconds from this problem, then why does a cancer patient survive so long as they do with this disease? The answer is that the cyanide victim has cyanide diffusing all through the body, wreaking sudden havoc everywhere. But please remember that in all but the sickest cancer patients, 95 plus percent of the volume of the body is normal. For the cancer patient, we have the advantage of dealing with mostly normal, almost all normal, healthy metabolism coming down this way. It's really only the tumors that have the aberrant metabolism, and those tumors are mostly encapsulated, walled off, making cancer usually a month-by-month -month problem, rather than a minute-by-minute -minute problem, such as in cyanide poisoning. So, at our naturopathic cancer clinic, for example, we work with the normal healthy metabolism of the individual to help defeat cancer. Now, you may have heard an urban legend or old doctor's tale 
that you should not give B12 to a cancer patient because the cancer will use that to reproduce. Nonsense. Our clinic has better results over more than a decade than any other clinic against cancer, and I've been using B12 with cancer patients even longer than that. You need every tool in the nutrient toolbox that is relevant to electron transport chain function, and that certainly includes B12. If you help the electron transport chain flow smoothly with appropriate nutrients and you nourish their home, the mitochondria, then you can divert body resources away from this cancer machinery. And that, my patient audience, is what the treatments at our Natural Cancer Clinic are all about. Check out our results at this site. My previous videos in the Cancer and Biochemistry series are at this link. It is August 1, 2018. I am Dr. Colleen Huber, a naturopathic medical doctor in Tempe, Arizona, and thanks for watching.